This video is brought to you by Ting. As of right now, for four to 500 USD, you can pick up two really solid iPhones, the first being the brand new 2020 iPhone SE with new components crammed into an older chassis, or the last gen iPhone 10, which of course is now two and a half years old. And with their similar price points in mind in this video, I wanna compare the two to help you decide which is right for you as of this year. But before we continue, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions as the YouTube algorithm likes that and will help push my content to more people. And if you are a recurring viewer, go ahead and click the bell icon and enable all notifications as it does help the channel out a lot. All right, so while the iPhone SE has a clean glass back, you know, with aluminum, like it has a minimal sort of aesthetic, I'm sorry, the iPhone 10 here just wins this category. The design one, hands down, due to its better build materials. I mean, we got stainless steel here compared to aluminum, which still feels nice, but this is heavier and just, you know, once again, feels more premium. This phone was, of course, sold at $1,000 when it came out. One thing I will say, though, is I do once again enjoy the minimalism of the iPhone SE, particularly in regard to its logo which is centered and there is no longer any iPhone labeling with you know newer iPhone models and then of course there's the bezel situation with the iPhone SE we have pretty much a design from 2014 with the iPhone 6 we have thick bezels a home button etc whereas we have the current gen design with the iPhone 10 it was the first to introduce a full screen display with thin bezels and a notch and of course it just looks better and more modern but I will say speaker quality is different with these devices and I say it goes in the favor of the iPhone SE, probably because A, this is a brand new, you know, non-used device, and B, speaker quality has definitely increased over the years, so some of the newer tech probably found its way into this more budget-oriented phone, so let's just compare speakers real quick here. Here is the iPhone 10. And here's the SE. So yeah, even though both these phones have stereo setups, I do think that the iPhone SE sounds a bit cleaner and fuller, maybe uh, possibly once again, because it has newer tech or because it's useless. You know, this was a used device. This iPhone 10, I got it from somebody who probably used it since launch. Next up, let's talk display and it's just not even a contest. I mean, I'm not saying that the iPhone SE has a bad display, but it's definitely outdated, even to a two-year-old device like the iPhone 10. To reiterate some specs, the iPhone SE basically has the display of the iPhone 8. You know, it's 4.7 inches, it's IPS, it's 750p, uh, compared to the iPhone 10's 5.8 inch OLED, 1125p uh, display, and has a higher pixel density compared to the SE, 458 here with the 10 versus 326. So everything, I mean, size, color quality, contrast brightness sharpness is better with the iPhone 10 and I'm not gonna lie uh, display is a hugely important aspect of a phone so this is something you know an aspect that I personally would look out for and would be a reason why I'd opt for the iPhone 10 over the newer albeit outdated looking iPhone SE and something else I want to note is that these phones are very similar in size and form factor with the 10 being a bit taller I believe maybe even a bit wider here yeah just a bit bigger maybe like a hundred and five percent of what the iPhone SE is but once again you just get a much bigger display here not only that once again a bigger and better display so yeah once again I'm not saying that the iPhone SE's display is horrible by any means but it's definitely destroyed by the now budget oriented iPhone 10 and speaking of being budget oriented and saving money if you are looking to save money you should absolutely consider cell service from today's video sponsor Ting with their excellent 4G LTE coverage award-winning customer support and pay as you use service it's really a no-brainer, and fun fact, the average Ting user pays just $23 a month per phone line. Switching to Ting is a painless process as well. Not only can you keep your own phone number, but you also have a wide selection of brand new hot smartphones to choose from, and you can even bring your own phone as well. So go to noah.ting.com and get a bill estimate for what you'll be paying based on your usage, and if you decide to switch and you bring your own smartphone, you can get $25 in service credit once again using my link, noah.ting.com, listed in the video description. Next up, let's talk battery life, and I think this is a category where things even out a bit here. Both, for example, can wirelessly charge with their glass backs, and from my you know usage case or my own personal usage, uh, both of these phones perform fairly similarly here, although their specifications are quite different different. 
The actual battery capacity of the iPhone 10 is around 2700 milliamp hours, whereas the iPhone SE has one of around 1800. And with this knowledge, when you factor in the specs of these devices and other info, things start to make sense. For example, the iPhone 10 has a beefier, more power hungry display, despite the fact that it's OLED and has a less power efficient processor. And not to mention the battery is degraded after like two years of usage. You know, I am the second owner of this device and the battery integrity with this phone is at 85%. Whereas the iPhone SE has a less power hungry display, a more power efficient processor, and a brand new battery with an integrity of 100%. And I actually did some somewhat scientific battery testing with these devices. I was taking pictures outside for this comparison, and when I was through, uh, my iPhone 10 was at 98%, and my iPhone SE was at 100%, and then I left them for 40 minutes at full brightness to play back some you know, video on YouTube. And when I was through with that, the iPhone 10 was at 87%, whereas the iPhone SE was at 83%. And then they even out after I left them, you know, playing TikToks and I scrolled through that app for like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. So it appears that the iPhone 10 might have better battery life, but I think it's fair to say that, you know, like I said, with the specs in mind and the battery degradation in mind, both of these phones are going to perform similarly in 2020, albeit it's going to be a little bit different if you do end up buying a brand new iPhone 10, which you still can, I think, off of Apple or from other sites as well. And ultimately that means, you know, you can get through a whole day with moderate ish usage but you know don't push it you're gonna have to charge more frequently if you are more of a heavy user next up let's talk camera and this is a category where I think the iPhone SE throws a bit of an uppercut towards the iPhone 10 uh, this is a 2017 device remember and although it looks newer on the outside the camera hardware is definitely older and doesn't quite stack up with the newer tech here and of course I'll state the obvious we have a dual camera with the iPhone 10 and a single camera with the iPhone SE all the sensors here are 12 megapixel there's a telephoto lens with the iPhone 10 I will add so you get 2x zoom which is pretty useful I have to say but even with its single lens the iPhone SE produces better images in my opinion overall in pretty much every category you know sharpness exposure color you name it I'll also note that both of these phones have 7 megapixel front facing cameras and the same thing stands true your selfies are going to look better with the iPhone SE even though you have all the face ID tech and the portrait tech with the iPhone 10 albeit there is a synthetic portrait mode with the iPhone SE which is pretty cool and then in regard to video recording I would say it's a similar story in terms of these phones capabilities both can record it up to 4k 60 which is nice here and both record really excellent 4k video both of these camera setups are optically stable and I would say the video quality between the two is more similar than the photo quality, but the image processing is just a bit better with the iPhone SE. So if I had to shoot video regularly, I would honestly opt for the iPhone SE. And I think the mic setup in the iPhone SE is a bit better as well too. And finally, let's talk performance here. The processor disparity is the biggest difference, of course, besides the very different displays here. The iPhone SE boasts the all new A13 processor and the X has the A11. So they're not too far apart in evolution they're in the same ballpark but obviously the newer processor does perform you know substantially better single core scores are pretty similar I would say once again in the ballpark 930 with the 10 1330 with the SE so everyday tasks are going to perform pretty similarly and I would say that's pretty much true I mean apps open up very quickly with both here you're not going to be sitting you know waiting for things to load both are very snappy and push the iOS 13 experience very nicely here animations pretty much never lag even even with the 10 despite its age here but then of course with multi-core scores they are quite different the iPhone SE has I think a 935 point lead over the 10 so if you're doing any heavy gaming or any intensive processor oriented tasks then you're probably going to want to go with the iPhone SE if you're a gamer if you're video editing on the go Oh, and I forgot to say this in part in my creepy ass whispering at 4.42 a.m. Um, there's, of course, a difference in biometrics. You got Touch ID versus Face ID. I think both are equally effective. However, I do like Touch ID more right now because I have to wear a mask out in public and, you know, masks and Face ID don't exactly mix well. But yeah, I'll say it. Both of these devices push a very similar iOS 13 experience and both have an identical amount of RAM. I think it's 3 gigs. Uh, 2.75 shows up with the iPhone 10 and Geekbench versus 2.88, so roughly 3 gigs 
gigs or three gigs. And uh, yeah, ultimately, if I personally had to choose one, because I don't do anything super insane with my phone, I'm not a mobile gamer, I'm not video editing, I don't need all of this power in the world, I would go with the iPhone 10 because of its bigger, better display. And also, I love the, you know, gestures, the navigation gestures make it a very different and more modern experience. But once again, if you're looking for power, if you're looking for a non-degraded battery, if you want better camera performance, and you know, like I said, a beefier processor, then you should probably go the iPhone SE route. And also keep this in mind here, the iPhone SE, although it looks older in its design, is going to be supported for longer due to its newer processor. So if you're worried about software update longevity, go with the iPhone SE because this will be, you know, left behind a year or two before this is. And that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was helpful. Once again, if you're looking to save money with your cell service, go ahead and check out noah.ting.com listed in the video description. I'd really appreciate it. Once again, if you'd leave a like, comment, and of course, subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.